Hey there everyone! So today I would like to discuss with you about interpreting linear inequalities. Just before we move forward, I would just like to remind you about what we discussed in the last lesson, which is about our power equations. So the solution for those equations, they will vary depending on what's your exponent. If your exponent is odd, like we saw last lesson, um, then x to the power of n equals k, k is a constant here, then to solve it, it's simply the root. So, for example, if you have x squared equals 6, then simply, um, this is even, okay, so it's another case, so x to the power of 3 is 8. That's odd, right? So, simply this is odd, we can just solve it as x equals the root, in this case, since this is 3, this exponent is 3, that's the cubic root of 8, which is 2. Um, now, when the number is even, we will have two possible solutions, two possible ways to get that number. If I show you again, for example, number 4, uh, if we solve this, we could have x equals plus or minus 2, because both 2 and negative 2, if you square them, you will get 4, right? Um, however, uh, this is actually this solution here. It's just when n equals 2, right? n equals 2. So if you want to find x, that's the square root of 4. And plus or minus here, since you might have a positive value or a negative value. So that's why it's plus or minus 2. So inequalities. Let's say that you're driving, or, well, you're being driven in a road, and you see a sign like this one. What does that represent? Well, that actually tells you a limit, a speed limit. And in this case, it's 80 kilometers per hour. Now, this means that, well, let's say that your car is at a speed S. That speed cannot be larger than 80 kilometers per hour. So it has to be less or equal than 80. This is an inequality. Now, if we consider that your car, when stopped, is at zero kilometers per hour, we could draw a line. So this is our number line. So to the left, we would have all negative numbers, which, well, let's just not consider them for this example. So let's start at zero. So if each of those slits here represent 10, then 80 would be here. So if you are asked to represent all speeds which are in this range here, we could simply just color from 0 all the way to 80. Now, there are two points here that we have to take a closer look. Here at 0, if our speed is 0, it is less than 80. So this point is actually included. The point 0 in our number line is inside of this limitation here. It is included. Also, if your speed is equal to 80, you're also under inside of this limit. So this point would also be included. Now let's think about a different situation now. You're getting to a park and there's let's say a very nice roller coaster with some crazy loops. However, for you to go into that particular um, toy, you need to be taller than a certain height. So let's say that, well, this height is 1.2 meters. So we can also represent this limitation as uh, in a number line. So, for example, here, you are only admitted in this particular uh, amusement if you're taller than 1.2. So I'm telling you that if you're exactly 1.2, you're not allowed in, you have to be taller than that height. 
So in this case, 1.2 is not included. So first thing we have to do, draw a number line. Okay, so both ways. Again, there's no such thing as zero uh, less uh, negative height, right? So it doesn't make much sense for us to discuss about negative values here. So let's start at zero. So as we go forward here, let's say that each of those slits, let me just get this next one here. Let's say this is zero. So let's say that each of those slits is 0 0.1. So I would have one here and 1.2 would be here. How could we represent this limitation here, this inequality in the number line? So we would simply get all the way from 1.2 and above. Now, why this? Well, if you're less than 1.2 or equal to 1.2, you are not allowed. So if you are in this range here, you will not be allowed. I can make this in a different scale to make it easier to be read. So in this new case here, you can clearly see if you're taller than 1.2, you will be allowed. Now, as I told you before, in this particular case, if you're exactly 1.2, you will not be allowed. So here we would have to draw a open, uh, not colored in dot. So it has to be blank inside. it. it, it cannot be filled in. So when this is not filled in, it basically means that this number is not included, which is different to our previous example in which this was included. So if you're driving at 80 kilometers per hour, you're under the rules, right? You're following the rules. If you are 1.2 here, you're not following the rules. So this is not included, only if you're taller than that. So let's take a look at a few numeric examples. So take a look at this expression. First, it would be important for you to be able to understand what it means and to describe what it means. So we've got x, which is a number between 1 and 5, 1 included. That's it. Now, if we draw our number line, okay, and now we can we may assume that we do have all values, negative and positive values. I'll just label this zero, and I'll assume that each um, box here, each square, is one unit. So here we would have one, and five would be here. Now. The middle part is quite obvious now, right? We know that between 1 and 5, all of those will be included. However, what about the 1 and the 5? Will each of those be included? So, let's see. 1 is included. It's lab, x is larger or equal than 1. So here, we would have this point filled in. But 5 is not included. So here, this point would be open. I'm making this much, much larger than it should look, just to make it easier for you to visualize. Now, let's see another example. What if my conditions are x less than 0, or x larger or equal than 4? So again, let's draw our number line. So, and just like before, I'm going to assume that this is zero, and then one, two, three, four to the right. This is four. It keeps going negative, keeps going positive. Now, where would my um, x be? Well x is either less than 0, so it's to the left of 0, or greater or equal than 4, so it's to the right of 4. Notice that x less than 0, there's no equal sign here, so 0 will not be included. And x greater or equal than 4 equals here, so 4 will be included. So if we draw this here, it would be open, and then we will just keep going all the way negative, right? Any number that we get, negative 10, 
is less than zero. So it, it is there. Negative a hundred, negative a thousand, negative a million, negative infinity. All of those are here. What about positive? Well, since four is included, this will be filled in. And we can just keep going all the way to positive. So four is here, five is here, six is here, eight, ten, eleven, a hundred, a thousand, a million. Any positive number that you can think, which is larger than four, is here all the way up to infinity. Now, notice that, notice here, let me show you a few numbers and let's discuss about them. So if we get a number here, let's say seven. So seven is larger than five. If I try to flip it, what could I say regarding five and seven? If seven is larger than five, then 5 is less than 7. So take a look here that if I flip those two numbers I will also have to flip the sign. Let's try with another number. Well let's take some negative number here. What about negative 2 and 0? So negative 2 would be less than 0. So if I want to flip I may write 0 is larger or greater than take away 2. That's another way of looking at it. Now, why am I doing this? Well, because we might have things like x is larger than 5. And this is the same thing as 5 is less than x. Those two mean the same thing. You can even, if you put a mirror here in between <laughs> That's almost what you get. I know the numbers would be reversed, right? But if you think of them as blocks, right? The blocks would be exactly in the same place and this would be flipped, right? The sign would be flipped. So when we have something like this, that's what we call a linear inequality. And there are actually a few properties that we can discuss so we can find and resolve and solve those problems and find values for x when it's a larger expression. Now, let's take a look at a very simple problem here. x is larger than 1. Now, what would happen if I added some numbers on both sides? Would it hold? Yes, it does. We can just apply any sum or subtraction in both sides and it should hold. Think of this um, as a number. So x is larger than 1. So let's think of x, a possible value for x would be 2, right? 2 is larger than 1. If I add 2 on the right, it would be 4. And if I add 2 on the left, on, on the, if I add 2 on the, on the left, it's 4. If I add 2 on the right, it's 3. 4 is larger than 3. If I add 3, it's 5 is larger than 4. 6 is larger than 5. So I can add any number on both sides and this will still be true. And not only we may add, but we can also subtract. So if x is larger than 1, x minus 1 will be larger than 0. And if you notice, this is the equivalent of getting a 1 to the other side and changing its sign. So you can see that this is still the same. This greater than is still the same, hasn't changed. Now notice, I'll just copy the same thing, that we, can, we may also multiply both sides by a factor. So if x is larger than 3, 3x will be larger than 3. I know it sounds obvious, but it's simple for us to visualize this in such simple context. However, when we have a very large expression with many, many terms, it's not as easy for us to visualize that. So let me show you this with some numbers as well. So 3 is larger than 2. So if I multiply, let's say, 3 by 2 and 2 by 2, 6 is larger than 4. Or if I multiply them, I don't know, by 5, both sides. 15 is larger than 10. So this will always hold. I can multiply both sides and the sign here 
is still valid. Now there are a few things that we may do and they will not actually keep the this sign here the same and it might flip. So let's take a look at some of the cases that I showed you just before. 3 is greater than 2. What happens if I flip those two, if I want to write 2 and 3? I would have to flip that sign. Now, that would also happen if I multiply both sides by negative numbers. So let's, let's see. 3 is less than 2, right? So what happens if I multiply both sides by negative 1? So the left hand side would become negative 3 and the right hand side would become negative 2. So negative 3 and negative 2, which one is smaller? If you're ever in doubt, you can draw the number line. So this is 0, this is negative 2, and this is negative 3. Which one is less? Well, obviously negative 3. So negative 3 is less than negative 2. So we can see that our sign was flipped because we have multiplied by a negative value. And that's the only case where this is going to change. Because if we multiply by a positive value, it will not change. If we add or subtract, it will not change. The only case where it will change is if you, well, flip your function like I did before. You flip your, your equation. Or if you multiply by a negative number. So summarizing, you may add or subtract. Your sign will not change. You may multiply by positive numbers and your sign will not change. Now, if you multiply by negative numbers or if you interchange your equation, what do I mean? Well, you've got x uh, larger than 1 and then you want to write it as 1 it will have to be less than x. When you interchange your equation, you change the signs, the left-hand side becomes the right-hand side and vice versa, then you will change your inequality. It will basically flip. So your inequality sign, if it was less than, it will be greater than and vice versa. So very simple problem now. 3x minus 4 less or equal than 2. So let's solve this with the rules that I've just shown you. So what we want to do here is make x our subject. That's the whole purpose. So we want to have something as x is less or, uh, less or equal than or x is greater or equal than. It doesn't matter which one, it will just provide us a different information. But that's something that we want. We want something on the other side and x alone on the left hand side. So you can always pause the video and try the question yourself. You should be able to. Um, however, I'm going to do it now. So I've got negative 4 on the left. To get rid of that, I have to add 4. And to keep it consistent, I have to do the same thing on both sides. So when I add 4, I'll get rid of this negative 4, and 2 plus 4 will be 6. So my new equation becomes then 3x is less or equal than 6. Now, what can I do here to get rid of that 3? Well, I may divide both sides by 3. And the question is, will I have to change this? the inequality sign here. Well, no. Why not? Because those values are positive. If they were negative, then I would have to flip the sign. However, since they are positive, it will just remain the same. So 3x divided by 3 is x, which is less or equal than 6 divided by 3 is 2. And this is our solution. x 
less or equal than 2. You might be asked to draw this in a number line, which hopefully it's not a problem to any of you. So you draw your number line just like we have been doing so far. And let's find point 2. Well, if I assume that this is 0, point 2 would be here. And since I've got x less or equal than 2, I'll draw another line here on top. Oops. I'll draw another line here on top going to the negative direction and since 2 is included I'll draw this as a filled in dot so x is less or equal than 2 this is the number line that represents that solution so another problem here 3 minus 2x less than 7 so remember that you can pause the video and try it yourself I will just carry on with it. Alright, so if I want to get rid of any of those um, numbers here, right, uh, well, what we may do here is just subtract 3. We want to get x on one of the sides. Some of you might argue, oh, this is negative, so I could just subtract 2x. That's perfectly fine. And we can do it here on the right after. So if I subtract 3 on both sides, we are going to have negative 2x less than and 7 minus 3 is 4. That's our new equation. So what can we do here? Well, to get rid of everything which is multiplying x, we would have to divide by negative 2 on both sides. Right? So if we divide negative 2x by negative 2, we will simply get x. If we divide 4 by negative 2, you may just divide 4 by 2 and change the sign. So that's negative 2. However, we have done something here, uh, which is divide or multiply by a negative number. So we know that this sign here will flip. So it was less than, now it will be greater than. If we draw this on a number line, um, let's just put our 0 here, our negative 2 is here, it go both sides, and where is our solution? Well, greater than negative 2. So it starts at negative 2 goes all the way to positive infinity however negative 2 is not included because it's just greater than it's not greater or equal than so one more example here negative 5 less than 9 minus 2x so I'm gonna do this a bit quicker now that we have done a few so we want to get to x oh I forgot to solve this in another method Let's go back to that question. So an alternative way to solve this would be to try and get rid of this 2x from the get-go. So what we would do, if we want to get rid of the 2x, we have to add, since it's negative, we would have to add 2x to the left and add 2x to the right. So our new equation would be 3 less than 7 plus 2x because this is going to cancel this out. Now, I do have a 7, and I want to get rid of it, so I'll have to subtract by 7 on both sides. So if we do that, 3 minus 7, that's take away 4, and here we just cancel those out, 2x. So if I divide both sides by 2 now, what do I get? Well, negative 2 and x. So it's just flipped, but you can see that it's exactly the same solution. Right? x is larger than negative 2, or negative 2 is less than x. If we flip this, remember, we will have to change this sign. It's just like we put a mirror. So x is greater than take away 2. And now let's go to the next problem, which I was about to begin. So negative 5 less than 9 minus 
2x. I'll try to solve this a bit quickly because we have done a lot now. Again, just like the previous example, we may add 2x here or we may do something else. I'll just add 2x on both sides just because it seems easier. But you could do in another way if you want. It's not a problem at all. So negative, well, 2x minus 5 less than those two are going to cancel out 9. So now I have to add 5 on both sides. So I can get rid of this constant 5 here. So if I add 5 on both sides, I will arrive at 2x less than 9 plus 5, 14. And if I divide both sides by 2, simple enough, x less than 7. Now less than 7, and it's not included. So if you're asked to draw your number line, okay, this is your number line. Um, let's just fix some point here, 0, so 7 would be here. And if we're talking about x less than 7, so we can start here at 7, going backwards all the way to infinity and beyond. And this is open, all right? This is not filled in um, because it's not there. It's not included. Now, the next problem is going to be the last example of this lesson. Um, even though it's honestly not as hard as it might look. So let's say that 3 minus 5x is greater or equal than 2x plus 7. Um, I just, I'm just asking you to solve for x and graph the solutions. When I say graph the solutions, I want something like this, a number line. So again, you may pause the video. That's the perhaps the biggest challenge that you're going to have in this lesson, even though it's not very hard. Uh, but on the problems, you might find things which are on the same level. So you may stop now and try it yourself before we move forward. So I'm going to carry on with the problem. If we analyze this, we've got x on both sides. So we will have to, well, collect both of them somehow. Um, let's see. There are loads of ways to solve this. Uh, we can either get rid of the axis in the beginning or get rid of the numbers. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to add 5x on both sides. So I can get rid of this negative 5x in the beginning here. So what do we get now? Well, this becomes 3, which is greater than or greater or equal than 2x plus 5x is 7x plus 7. So, just like before, um, I want to get x alone here. I want x to be my subject. So I need to subtract whatever I have here so I can get rid of that and cancel it out. So if I cancel those sevens out, I will arrive at 7x is less or equal than 3 minus 7 will be negative 4. So, so far, this is what we have. Now, we may flip. And I think that's the appropriate time for us just to organize our, our working out. We can flip those two. And again, if we flip them, the sign will change direction. So here it was greater or equal than, and now it's going to be less or equal than. So 7x is less or equal than negative 4. Notice that, look, this point which was pointy, it was pointing at 7, it's still pointing at 7 here. So it's it's consistent in a way. Now, what is the last step that we have to do here? Well, we need to get rid of the 7, so we have to divide by 7. Since it's a positive number, there will be no change to our inequality sign here. So the final thing that we're going to get is going to be x is less or equal than negative 4 over 7. And we may draw that in a number line. The only thing that we have to understand is that this is not a whole number, which shouldn't be a problem. Uh, we have 
already discussed about integers, about irrational numbers, right? So it's just a real number. It's not integer, it's not natural, but it's not a problem. So if this is our number line down here, um, let's just label somewhere zero. And let's try and find where this number would be. Now, what would be negative 7 over 7? Well, negative 7 over 7 is the same thing as negative 1. Right, so if I split, let's say that I split, make something a bit better for this case. So if I have 7 here and I count 7 spaces here and I get to negative 1, each step that I take here to the left represents negative 1 seventh. Right, so negative 1 seventh, negative 2 seventh, so this is negative 1 over 7, this is minus 2 over 7, this would be minus 3 over 7, and so forth. So the number which would be negative 4 over 7 would be the fourth one, which is this one. All right, and that is the number that we're comparing x to, and we're saying that x is less or equal to that number. So what we have to do is basically just put a number here, and we're going to call it negative 4 over 7, and we may draw a line to the left, going all the way to infinity. This point should be filled in since it's included, since this is less or equal than. Now, I understand that this is perhaps the most difficult problem, but it's not difficult at all, and you should be able to solve it just by using the same rules that we have used in the simplest exam the simpler examples. Alright, so that's all for today. Uh, there are some exercises and drop me a line if you have any doubts.